good morning it is Scott with the Dunnage Garage and we are on the road again this time we are going to the Nebraska National Forest Bessie Ranger District didn't know much about the place so I did some research and this is what I found out the Nebraska National Forest and Grasslands began in 1902 as an experiment the University of Nebraska botany professor Dr. Charles E. Bessie with the assistance of Gifford Pinnock First Forest Service Chief convinced President Theodore Roosevelt to set aside two treeless tracts of Nebraska sandhills as forest reserves. Dr. Bessie's intent was to grow trees, which would offset what some thought would be a national timber shortage from large fires, unregulated harvest, and the country's growing appetite for wood products. Thus began a pioneering effort to plant trees in what is now the largest human-made forest in the United States. Though the Sandhill Forest never met Bessie's vision, it is important for its wildlife, aesthetic, and recreational values, and as a living monument to that vision. Charles E. Bessie's Tree Nursery, the oldest federal nursery, pioneered the large-scale production of tree seedlings and still produces 2.5 to 3 million per year for distribution to national forest, state, and tribal agencies in the Great Plains and West. A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow, but when the sun came up, the plants were scorched and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among the thorns which grew up and choked out the plants. Still other seed fell on good soil where it produced crop a hundred, sixty or thirty times what was sown. Whoever has ears, let them hear. Matthew 13, 3 through 9. It's safe to say I would never have imagined planting a forest in the sand hills of Nebraska. But yet, here's a, here's a forest and it is flourishing. And I think the same is with the Word of God. We as people don't know when that word will be ignored or when it will be choked out or when that word that we give will flourish much like this forest. So let's spread that word every chance we get. I arrived much later in the day than I had hoped and it's starting to get dark and I've been craving tacos all day long so it's time to set up camp, cook dinner, sit by the fire and contemplate what kind of adventures we're going to get into tomorrow. What do you think we're going to see? Let's find out. After an amazing night of sleep, it is time to make some breakfast. Let's do some sausage, some hash browns, and eggs, and just do kind of a, uh, a skillet scramble. And then let's go explore this 90,000 plus acre hand-planted forest, the largest one in the world. 
This ought to be fun. Now this is another unexpected gem of this park. This is the Scott Lookout Tower. This thing is amazing. Not only because of the name, but it's neat. You get great views of the park. It's an easy climb. Unfortunately, it's not wheelchair or handicap accessible. And if you're scared of heights, eh, you'll have a problem. But neat place, great views, well worth the climb. The Nebraska National Forest Bessie Ranger District is 90,000 acres of outdoor wonderland. You can hike, hunt, fish, take OHV trails with your side-by-sides and motorcycles. You can camp and there is plenty of dispersed camping. This place is amazing and at the top of Scott's Tower you have a good view of it. Now let's go explore some of those uh, four-wheel drive only trails.
may have to break out the sand traction boards. Uh oh. Well, maybe not. I haven't aired down. I'm still running full highway pressure. I think airing down would have really helped right there. Most of this park I was able to do in two wheel drive, just a few spots in the sand that caused some issues. But again, running full tire pressure, about 30, 32. I think if I'd have been down at 10, there'd have been no issue whatsoever. Well, after a full day of exploring all the roads and trails, I was ready to set up camp and have an early setup and plenty of time to do filming and dinner. And Mother Nature had different plans for me. I started noticing the cows in the area were starting to bellow, the wind was starting to pick up, and it was starting to get dark. And not like good night dark, as in stormy dark. There was no cell phone reception, there was no internet, so I hiked up the road to find uh, some better reception, couldn't get it, so I broke down the tent, broke down the camp, drove up the road, made a quick phone call, and Matt confirmed it. I was in a severe thunderstorm watch. So I rushed back down to where I'd set up camp, threw dinner together real quick, and this was just a quick get it cooked, get it eaten, and see what this storm is going to do. Now this storm is supposed to last over two hours. I'm only two hours from home, so I kind of made the decision it was time to head home instead of sitting in the Jeep and idling for the next two hours in the rain. And faster than it came in, that storm blew out, and within 10 minutes, it stopped raining. So I went back to the camp, set up the campground, and had a wonderful night, and got some amazing pictures.
Call that a wrap of the Nebraska National Forest Bessie Ranger Station Overland Adventure. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. We'll see you in the next video and the next adventure. Have yourself a blessed day. Remember, you fix the Jeep, the Jeep fixes you.